Hey there, I'm Andy. I'm lead pastor here at St. Matthew's United Methodist Church in Madison, Mississippi. And I want to take a few minutes to give some context to and explain to you uh, a decision uh, that you may have found out uh, today uh, or in the past few days about uh, my discernment here at St. Matthew's and our church's discernment. As you may have heard, uh, our discernment team has uh, recommended to our council that um, they move forward with a vote in discernment. This is not a recommendation. This is necessarily what we should do, but just that as we've had so many conversations, they feel like it's best for the conclusion of our process to have an actual congregational vote. And I've told the church, and I've told the team, and I've told friends online that uh, the church discerns uh, what it will do, and I, as a pastor, an ordained elder, discern what I will do. And uh, I've discerned for many years. Uh, my wife, Holly, and I had a conversation recently about uh, this process of discernment for us. We've been, goodness, praying and thinking about this for many, 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 many years. Uh, for anyone who's been in ordained ministry or in local church ministry in the United Methodist Church for any length of time, you know that this was conversations we were having and thinking through. So within that, as I've discerned in these seasons, I've tried to keep an open mind and try to process and try to think and try to pray, frankly, most of all, about what I felt called by God to do. And so in light of all these things, I feel like it's important for me to share with you and to give some context as to why I feel called by God um, to remain United Methodist. And uh, the the first thing uh, that I want to share with you about this process is the thing that I just said. I just feel called by God to say United Methodist. I do. I've prayed about it. I've talked about it. Uh, I've talked with friends. I've talked with mentors. I've talked with colleagues. I have friends across the spectrum who are doing a variety of things. Uh, some have disaffiliated with their churches. Others are unsure what they're doing. Many have remained United Methodist. So I've tried to solicit a variety of opinions and thoughts, readings. Uh, but at the end of the day, I, I feel called by God uh, to remain United Methodist. And there are several reasons why I feel that calling. Uh, first, the first reason is the the e, what I call the ethos of the Methodist Church. Um, we are a church that is orthodox in our theology. Um, I affirm uh, the creeds. I affirm the historic doctrine of our church. I the I affirm the historic doctrine of the Christian church. Um, uh, I do not stand and affirm the apostles or the Nicene Creed with my fingers crossed behind my back. I affirm it because I believe it. I love the line by the old Christian songwriter, Rich Mullins, talking about the creed where he says, I did not make it, no, it is making me. I affirm the faith handed down to us by the apostles. And that is the foundation of the United Methodist Church. We are a church in that way. We uh, are in the line of Wesley and, uh, and of Coke and Asbury and of these of these uh, Orthodox leaders, and that is who our church is. But our church has to it a theological method um, that some have to write it, uh, some don't like, uh, some don't approve of, and I respect that because uh, what's, what's the line? Um, uh, big men talk of ideas, small men talk of people. I, I, I love the conversation of ideas. And so I have friends of all denominational stripes that are going to come out of a different place when it comes to theology. Um, but I like the theological method of the United Methodist Church. I, I just do. I just, as I've investigated other methods, as, I, as I've investigated other ways to process and think through things, I, I truly, from Andy Stoddard, find the reflection of the Wesleyan quadrilateral, quadrilateral to be the best method of theological reflection that I've found. And for me, I I am so deeply formed by that theological process that I can't find myself being somewhere else because of that. The concept of Scripture being our primary revelation, uh, the understanding that Scripture is the divine revelation from God, and that it is God's authoritative and holy word. Um, someone asked my wife recently about Scripture and what I believe, and I'm like, and she said, he believes it's the word of God, and that's exactly what I do. It is God's inspired and holy word. But what I love about the quadrilateral, what I love about our theological method is that we take scripture and we understand that it is interpreted through lenses. And so I interpret the Bible through the lens of a 21st century 
American male. That's how I look at the Bible. So when I see scripture talking about God's love as a father, I, as the father of two children, I understand that completely. And I've talked about this recently in a sermon, how I didn't truly understand God's love in that way until I became a father. And then I'm like, okay, now I get it. So I look at scripture through the lenses of tradition, reason, and experience. So for me, I'm going to always start with what the word says. And then I'm going to say, well, what, is, what does Wesley say about it? And Wesley's no God. He's just a man. But his theology influences me. So what does Wesley say? Or what does C.S. Lewis say? Or what does Augustine say? Or what does Athanasius say? Or what does Thomas Odin say? Or what is whoever? What, what, what do any of these saints, these men and women of God who have gone before and who have, who have taught and have, have trained, what do these saints have to say about Scripture? So I'll start with tradition. What's the teaching of my church? What's the teaching of these saints? Tradition. But then reason. Let's think about these things. Let's think through it. Let's let's think about what Scripture says. Let's have a conversation. If you've ever been part of a disciple Bible study, you know that you're going. That's going to be a group of ten to twelve people who are going to come from a variety of places, and we're going to think through Scripture together. And we may come out with different interpretations, but we can learn from that. So let's think through this. Jesus says to love the Lord your God with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength. So I love that concept, and then I love, as I said earlier, the experience. What I observe in others is what how Wesley talked about experiences, what he noticed in other people, what he experienced through others, then also what my human experience has taught me. So a misconception of the quadrilateral is that they're all four equal. No, Scripture's primary. Scripture's primary. But these other three, tradition, reason, experience, are tools by which we interpret Scripture. I just, that resonates with me so deeply. That's how I interpret the Bible. And that is the theological method of reflection in the United Methodist Church. And it just simply is who I am. It simply is how I interpret scripture. So first is that. And that and that theological method produces our heart. That produces the way we United Methodist are. The, the type of Christian that I want to be is the type of Christian that I've seen exemplified over and over and over in Christians that the United Methodist Church has produced. In, in Summit, Bogachetta, Ripley, Philadelphia, Madison, Petal, across my many appointments. I've seen that over and over again in United Methodist churches. And not that other churches can't produce that, but I've seen it so beautifully done in our church. So that theological method forms our heart. And that's who I am. But that theological method then produces the type of evangelistic church that I think the world needs. The world needs the United Methodist voice. The world needs the voice of our church because we are a church that's able to go out into all the world, into rural, rural Mississippi, urban areas, uh, Africa, Asia, Europe, wherever, and we can point people to Jesus Christ in the context where they find themselves. And so uh, United Methodist Church in Madison is going to look very different from United Methodist Church in Memphis versus Michigan versus Zimbabwe. That the United Methodist Church is able to take this truth of Jesus Christ and apply it in ways that fits the context that we're in. And we're able to go into all the world, all the world, all the world. As Wesley said, the world is your parish. And take this good news of Jesus and meet people where they are. Meet people where they are. I, I truly believe that the way we look at the world, the way we do theology, the way we try to, to love people is a way that allows us to meet people without preconditions where they are and love them to Jesus. Love them to Jesus. As you've heard me preach, my, 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 verse for preaching is Romans 2, 4. Do you not know that you're driven to repentance by the kindness of Christ? I think we're a church that so deeply emphasizes grace and God's grace to the world is that in that grace, that kindness, that, that, that mercy and hope and justice is who we deeply are. In a world that seems to be falling apart at the seams, I, I don't believe that there's a church that can do it as well as we can. I truly believe that the United Methodist local congregations are the best tool for evangelism 
in the world. My love for United Methodism is not tied to our structure and our con our connectional bureaucracy because that's all going to change, y'all. I've been under appointment for 24 years. I know these things change. Structures change. Things like that change. And it's got very little to do with that. But it's got everything to do with how the local church lives out the gospel. And I've seen, y'all, I, when I have seen the United Methodist Church click, when I've seen local United Methodist churches click, there's no church that can impact the world in every way like the United Methodist Church. So I'm saying United Methodist because of our theological method, because of our evangelistic ability. And lastly, it's just who I am, y'all. Um, I'm not staying because of appointments or pension or insurance or any of these things, because those, just like structures, those things change. No, mm -mm. but I pray through it. I've considered options. I've thought, well, you know, because my joke's always about theological mutt. Went to a Baptist college and a Presbyterian seminary. So I've prayed through it. Maybe, maybe I'm called to be Baptist in some way. I've got many of my mentors who were parts of a part of a group called the Cooperative Baptist Fellowship. Maybe that's where I'm called to be, but no, I'm too connectional for that. Maybe the seminary I went to was Cumberland Presbyterian. Maybe I'm called to be Cumberland Presbyterian. No, I just I'm too Wesleyan. So I looked at Wesleyan options, global, free Methodist. Those are great denominations. Global's just starting. God's going to use them for great things. The Free Methodist Church is a church that I truly admire. I think great things happen in the Free Methodist Church. But no, I didn't feel a calling there. I prayed hard about the Episcopal Church. Um, when I'm not worshiping, I tend to, when I'm not worshiping here at St. Matthew's or leading worship here or preaching, I tend to go to a local Episcopal church just because I, I love the liturgy. And I love the communion. Um, and and my wife and I, we prayed about it. And if I did not believe that God was finished with me in ministry, I may have just given I may have just given um up my credentials and just become a lay person in the Episcopal Church, but but I didn't feel released uh from ministry. And um I'm also a little bit too, if you've heard me preach, I'm a little bit too camp meeting-ish. <laughs> I don't know how that would land there. Ultimately, as I just thought about where my home is, where my feet are planted, it's the United Methodist Church. Um, I made a vow at the altar of Christ United Methodist Church in Jackson, Mississippi, and on June 13th, 2006, to order my life in this way. And nothing's changed. I affirm the discipline. I affirm who we are. I was asked, do I believe that our doctrine is biblical? And I said, I do believe that it is. I still believe that. It's simply who I am. So I wanted to share this with you about why I feel called by God to remain United Methodist. Um, I pray we all discern well. I pray we all have deep conversations with God and with others. Um, I would love uh, to continue this conversation with you offline. I probably won't engage in a lot of conversation online about this because I'm not sure that social media is the best place to have these conversations. But I would love to talk with you offline about this over coffee, over a phone call. Please reach out to me. Um, being pastor of St. Matthew's is one of the highest honors of my life. Uh, and I'm praying for our church as we enter into this season. Um, I know many of you have been praying for me. And I appreciate those prayers. Romans 8, 28, y'all. All things work for good for those who love God and are called according to his purposes. I believe that deep in the core of who I am. And so I wanted to just give you some additional context as to why it is that I'm remaining United Methodist. So go with God. Let's remain in love with each other. Love you guys. Thanks for watching this. I'd love to have more conversation with you. Thanks. Thanks.